So um, this can be a pain to remove those screw here and all those screw. Um, the next step is to put the um, uh, piston um, uh, pin in the hole here, and those little clip needs to be removed to remove the piston first. So this is the front of the engine, the back, or the clutch, or the, whatever torque converter is. Uh, the, the thing is, you need to remove those two to get the, uh, let's say, the front piston, get the circuit out, and the easiest way is to go on the back here and push the pin out. So pin out, push the piston, Let me tell you what I, why I'm doing that. This engine uh, had a slight rod knock. This is the oil pump. And this is, it's difficult to see because the piston is not there anymore, but this rod is loose. I can slightly pull and push on it like that, okay? Not much. So that's why maybe I can save this one, okay? Uh, this one is a very good working engine with low mile, but I didn't take any chance because it was full of uh, coolant mixed with oil. I had clean at some point. It's been years, and um, this is uh, the, the crankshaft was measured and it's fine. Um, so we'll come to that later. The, what I'm doing today is this assembly of the single cam uh, 2.5 uh, Subaru engine. Uh, so pistons are out and they have number we'll, we'll, I'm gonna explain that to you right now just a second so I don't know if you can see but it's hard to see I know there's a B and a B and an A and a B this will tell you which piston is going where so here we have a A so the four piston I have here were clean and there's a B there's a B there's a B and there's a A so the A is going here that said, those two notch always going towards the pulley, the two notch here. So next is the oil pump. So this is the best pry point. Very important that O-ring here. This is the high pressure line, and this is the comeback. Oils come back here, and the pressure goes there. That's why there's an O-ring. I will show you most um, starter screw that holding the block. To, there's one where the oil pan is. Okay. There's two inside here okay all the top one all those here there's one behind for now that's it I'm gonna count them after um, passenger side so you got two here four inside here of those long one that that's the main torque bolt okay and you got two smaller ones in the short from the driver's side. Those are driver's side. And the rest of the normal one around are driver's side. So, where the oil pan is, there's only one little one like that, okay? That's it. This is the only, that's the, the, the pulley here. That's a long one, okay? But the rest here, are all the same length 
you cannot go wrong with that really okay inside on the driver's side there was those four okay and on the uh, on the uh, passenger side there were those six okay basically if I remember right there's only one left and it's in the back here let's go see or we're in the back where the clutch is or the pressure plate or whatever and there's another long one exactly like the other so it's pretty easy to remember of what I know they are all out and you can see already you cannot see it but my case is splitting a bit here so I will double check and make sure that they are all out so what I did is just try to open it slowly to see if it will go and it's going it's splitting all around so it would not do that uh, if I had one screw left okay so I'll put the camera on the stand and open the case so there's one dowel here on the bottom and one on the top so this is where you should pry first this one is easy this one was harder and it's okay it's splitting now so I'm gonna put it aside Let's count them. One, two, seven. There's 18 bolt. Seven, eight with the small, two smaller ones from the front uh, driver's side, inside the uh, water jacket driver's side, and all uh, passenger side, those six ones. And there's also one, two, three, little seven, one for the oil pump here. So that's all what's holding that two half. Now we're going to see the faulty. Oh, it is, it, the oil comes from here, and it, that's why this cylinder, I think it's number whatever, four, it, it's always starving. So I, I know it's finished. Let's see what kind of damage. Of course, I've never seen damage on the main crankshaft bearing, really. Well, I mean this this is nothing um, but this is all nice by touch so we're gonna go see here this one not there's a few thing about the main bearing this one towards the back of the engine is different it has sides this one and this one are the same this one and this one are the same they have a little notch here okay but that's of course it goes with the notch ear notch and this one here can be can almost be can almost be pushed sideways there's nothing on this side that will do nothing okay S simple as that um, so that's for the bearings and very important those uh, oil pressure o-ring and that, that, that that's a cool one pretty sure I have to check back in my book uh, rod rod have a bump here they all have bump towards the pulley okay and they have a written part number or no probably just a, a size number here and they're all different so if you're not sure about that you take a picture and for now I'm just, just gonna remove the last one the one that, that I think it's dead and um, that's it so number number with number there's no number on the other side so number on number match match uh, and bump bump towards the, the front the crank the crank pulley okay so the rod are kind of a little hard to remove but not that much so You see the discoloring here? This engine has not failed yet. Well, it, was, it was loose enough to make some kind of a noise. So it's not too late probably to save that thing. I'm surprised I would have thought that there would have been more damage. But I'm gonna, well, you can feel 
you can feel it here, but there's not much use. I hope the camera is good enough so you can, this is a good rod. Barely, there's no wear on this one, you can see, even the color of the rod is, that. that's not that important. Look at the discoloration here. And and strangely, those two one in the center are the worst one. I didn't think so. I've never seen that. So the the starvation was pretty much everywhere. Even this one is not bad. I'm gonna put the camera down and look me at. I'm gonna move that rod. I know. Can you hear the noise or at least see something? It's not much. The first thing, this is the conclusion of what I'm thinking now and how much is worth to save a case or not. First of all, you need to check your line bore, okay? You see that zero needle, you go all around and you have a measurement to take different places. I know you cannot see, but it's pretty, it's all cylinder were checked and they're within uh, spec. So, the case is not full of metal also. It will have to be steam clean. Um, okay. Where the crank shaft sits in the case, it's, it's with inspect still. Uh, but where the rod goes, it's, with, it's, it's really worn out a bit. So this crank will need to be machined. No. We're talking about $100 to $120 Canadian to machine a crank. Uh, oversized uh, bearing set is about 100 bucks. Cleaning is about, I don't know, it's probably around 30, 40 uh, each side. So this can be saved for about under 300 bucks with all new bearings everywhere. And of course the rod has no damage because the bearing is still intact at some point. Um, so I'm gonna do it I'm gonna come back later with another video about this block being all redone and to see if it's worth saving because I see some kind of grooving at some place and I have a specialist for that better than me and uh, that's it for this case the next step the next video is putting back this one together as you can see this is a really nice crankshaft this is an old mile you can see all the mark, no discoloring or anything. So the next step will be to put that together on another video.